your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. (laughs) Claudia, based on the play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. David, do you notice anything different about me tonight? Since dinner, especially, I mean? You're dancing around an awful lot. Well, that's so you'll notice. Now, let me see. Is it something about you? Your your hair is different. My hair is exactly the same. You're sure you're not parting it on the other side? The other side of what? What do you think? The other side is for men. Well, I give up. What's different since dinner? You've only looked at me as far as my forehead. And your forehead is frowning. Have you got a headache? No, not yet. You're sure? Positive. Funny. You look as if something hurt you. Oh, nonsense, David. Of things to wear... What do you like to buy, Beth? Mm, neckties. Neckties? Mm. I like to buy shoes, Beth. Shoes? Mm-hmm. I expected you to say dresses. Nope. Definitely shoes. Not me. I guess because new shoes aren't ever as comfortable as worn shoes, particularly when they're too small and make a person frown. David, then you do notice. Notice what? Oh, I give up. I'm never going to buy another new pair of shoes as long as I live. I might be running around barefoot for all you care. Oh, is that what you're driving? Yes! You bought new shoes. Where are they? On the chandelier. Where do you think? Well, that's a funny place for them, darling. Why why don't you put them on? I'm going to hit you over the head with one of them. Oh, (laughs) I see them. They're on your feet. One on each foot. (laughs) Well, what do you know about that? How I stand you, I will never know. I spent hours this afternoon arguing with that silly shoe salesman trying to be sure I got a pair of shoes you like. And you sit there rolling your head around like a rag doll talking nonsense. How does a rag doll sound when he's talking nonsense? Like you. Tell me, darling, what is this shoe salesman like? I won't tell you until you tell me how you like my shoes. Oh, I like them fine. Now, now tell me about the shoe salesman. You like them fine. Mm. You like them fine. You haven't even looked at them. Well, certainly I like them. What do you want me to do, get a microscope? You are impossible. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I think they make your foot look very small. You do? Mm. That's what I thought, and that's what the shoe salesman thought, too. So small that I think they must be too small for you. They are not. They are perfectly comfortable. They look awfully small to me. Too small. They look as if they're giving you a headache. I noticed that. Oh, you and Mama. Every time I buy a pair of shoes to make my foot look decent, You tell me they're too small. They measured my foot. They fit me perfectly. I could walk around the world. No, you better get started. It's getting late. Oh, David, you... You sure they're comfortable? They're not, darling. You you can tell me. I I won't tease you. David, if you say another word against them, I'll wring your neck. It's the vamp that makes them look so small. The vamp? You, You mean like Dracula? No, I don't mean like... Dracula, the vamp like on my shoe. Oh, that vamp, the one with uh, no R. And they were very cheap, too. Where was the sale? At Taylor's, it was a... David, how'd you know I bought them at a sale? I know my wife. These are twenty-two fifty shoes, and I got them for, guess what? Twenty-one fifty. Twelve ninety-five. I'd have been a fool not to buy them. Well, it's worth it being a little small at that price, I'll admit. David, they are not too small. I usually wear A, and these are double A. One little A can't make much difference. You'd be surprised. I would be, because the shoe salesman said that the last of these shoes ran wide. The last what? I don't know. What last do you suppose he meant? Uh, Probably your last good pair of feet. Very funny. (laughs) Seriously, darling, they're very nice-looking shoes. I wouldn't have bought them if they weren't. Aren't you glad I didn't get shoes that are open-toed and open-heeled? I wouldn't have married a woman who wore open toes and open heels. It's one of the first things I noticed about you way back when... Oh, I couldn't agree with you more. This kind of shoes are fine for sitting. But after all, shoes are for walking. 
Aren't they? Absolutely. Mm. I feel very strongly that if you're going to wear shoes, you have to have toes and heels. Certainly. After all, what what else is there to a foot but a toe That's and That's exactly what heels. I told a shoe salesman. He had a beautiful mustache and the silliest manner. You'd have thought he was serving me French pastry. Do I have nice legs? Mm. Not bad. Not bad. Is that all? Mm. Pretty nice. Shoe salesman said they were lovely in these shoes. I'll knock his block off. They're lovely in any shoes, and you can tell him that for me. I will. I'll go back there tomorrow and tell him. Look, I'm dancing on my feet. I feel as if I'm walking on air. These shoes are absolutely divine. Well, I think we ought to take them out and celebrate. We can't spend the evening at home with you and your new pair of shoes. We'll take them out and show them the town. Where'll we go? Uh, how about going dancing? You just said that you... Dancing? Oh, no! These are dancing shoes, aren't they? They are not. They're opera pumps. Opera pumps? I will not go to the opera. We will go dancing. They'll be ruined dancing. They'll get all scuffed and marked and ruined. Are you hinting that I step on your feet when we dance? No, I'm not hinting. You dance wonderfully, darling. Well, if I say so myself, I I do. You do. <laughs> I should have joined the ballet. You should have. When I was six months, my mother said to me, Druska. Druska? That's what she called me, Druska. I never knew that. You must you. dance for the Tsar. You must be the finest dancer in the Imperial Ballet. <laughs> you have angels in your feet, Druska. And bats in your belfry, Druska. <laughs> well, shall we dance? <laughs> David, you're a goop. I love dancing with you here in our pajamas and without my shoes on at all. But I simply loathe dancing in public. You're a shy, madame. I will give you the leçon so you will have the confidant. I am not shy. I just don't like being crowded. And there's no place to dance in New York except on a postage stamp. And if you don't step all over me, everybody else will. So I'm sorry, I won't dance. Well, then how are we going to celebrate? Well... There's a Mickey Mouse at the corner and a Donald Duck, David, both of them for the price of one. Are you sure? Positive, I noticed this afternoon. It's a plot. It's a plot. You noticed? Then you went out and bought the shoes, so I'd have to take you to the movies. <laughs> You'll probably even take them off in the movies, so I, I don't see well, what don't good... you want to go, darling? The shoes are for walking, not sitting. You said so yourself. In a movie theater, you... All right, just... we'll walk there and we'll walk home. How's that? Perfect. Come on, shoes. Let's hurry. <laughs> How are you doing? Me? I'm doing fine. You're not walking very fast. Oh, what's the hurry? Mickey Mouse doesn't go on till 8.43, and it's only 8.29. We've got plenty of time. Seems to me you're limping a little. Limping? Don't be silly. Why should I limp? Oh, I don't know. I thought maybe your feet hurt. My feet hurt? Why should they hurt? That little A. What little A? Skip it. Don't run, David. I can't run. I'm sorry, darling. I... I didn't realize I was walking so fast. David, you're not walking. You're running. Darling, I, I'm not walking any faster than usual. You're just walking slower. I'm not. I'm walking the same as usual. This is just exactly how fast I walk when I walk with Bluff. Well, it might interest you to know that I'm your husband and David Norton and an architect. I am not Bluff, your dog. Really? How do you do? David, we almost there. Just around the calling, darling, uh... Your feet hurt? Will you stop saying they hurt? You'll get them subconscious if you keep on suggesting it. Pretty soon they will hurt. The power of suggestion. <laughs> you want me to carry you? I do not. Oh, aren't they beautiful shoes? I just love them. is so brave and so handsome. He reminds me a little of you, David. <laughs> Button up your coat, darling. It's gotten colder out. Oh, Am I walking too fast, are you? Nope. Just right. It's faster than before. It doesn't mm. seem so to me. These shoes are wonderfully comfortable. And they don't pinch anymore? Not a bit. Say, how'd you know this day? <laughs> it wasn't very difficult. The way you were mincing along. Oh, I was not. You're a pretty good walker, usually. One of the things I like about you. All right, they did pinch a little. But I took them off in the movie, and when I put them back on, they fit me perfectly. I feel as if I'd worn them for years. 
really quite remarkable, don't you think? Maybe your feet shrank in the movies. Maybe they did. Maybe the blood ran up into my hands instead. Because you were <laughs> sitting down. <laughs> These aren't sitting down shoes after all, are they? No, you seem to be walking fine now. Oh, what a wonderful sail it was. It's awfully dark out, isn't it? I can't even see my nose. Or my feet. <laughs> yeah. No moon tonight. Hey, hey, you two. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Uh, if you don't mind. David, is he calling us? I don't know. Hey, wait a minute. Please wait. Yes, it is us. I'm, I'm awfully sorry, mister, but... Um, yes? Um, what is it? I'm, I'm sort of embarrassed, but would you... Um, yes? Well, it's just that my wife... Uh, were you in that movie just now? Yes, we were, but I, I don't see the... And were you sitting on the left aisle, say, say around the middle of the house? David, that's exactly where we were sitting. They were wonderful seats. If you don't mind, I'd like to know what this is all about. Yes, yes, now, I, I, I don't blame you. It's, it's just that I'm a little, um, well, how should I, how should I put it? I, I'm a little embarrassed to, uh, it's sort of personal in a way. Oh. Uh, personal? Claudia, what have you... Me? This wasn't my idea. But my wife, she said that probably you, um, well, I, I hate to ask you, but... Is it something serious? Oh, oh, my wife is very upset. She says that you, madam, have walked out of the theater in her shoes. What? Why would I do something like that? I, I don't know, but <laughs> my, my wife takes off her shoes in the movies. Under the table. Oh, oh. They, they all do. She... She took them off tonight. And so did mine. There's nothing extraordinary about that. Women's shoes always hurt. Mine don't now. Well, uh, the point is, uh, madam, don't think I'm being forward, but are you wearing your own shoes? Of course they're mine. They fit me perfectly. They're so comfortable. Uh Uh-oh. Darling, you'd better take a look. David, this is ridiculous. Besides, it's dark here. I can't see. I'll light a match. I I know it's absurd, but... You see, my wife is in the theater, and her shoe disappeared. She figured that they rolled down under your seat, and maybe you, uh... Here, I've got a match ready. Well? Well, darling? My shoes, they're gone! Well, I'll be... (laughs) Well, you little thief. David, I don't see what's so funny. I'm terribly sorry, but I'll have to take them back to her. She's... uh... Impatient, of course. Go on, Claudia. Give the man back his shoes. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. Consideration can't be measured by cost. It's usually a question of thoughtfulness, like offering your cleaning woman ice-cold Coca-Cola when you stop for the pause that refreshes. To be certain there's always plenty of Coke on ice, Have your grocer or service station attendant put a case in the car next time you drive. Then you and your household helper can both work refreshed. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. <laughs>